Welcome. In this lecture video, we're going to take a look at uh, another set of classic problems in Newtonian dynamics. Um, these ones involving contact forces, uh, using Newton's second law to solve for the acceleration in the system, and also important is an understanding of how Newton's third law affects the motion of the system. So we've got two blocks on a frictionless surface. Let's say one has a mass of m, the other one has a mass of 2m, and we're going to take and apply a force f to the smaller block. And again, there's no friction. So as always with our problems involving Newton's dynamics, we are going to draw free body diagrams. Let's start with the free body diagram for the block of mass m. We have mg going down. We have the normal force, let's call that n1, going up. And we have this push force acting to the right. And then there is a contact force between the two blocks that would be acting to the left on that block. Let's call that F sub C. Now block little m accelerates to the right because <coughs> F is bigger than F sub C. Again, F sub C is that contact force between the two blocks. And the big block pushes on the little block to the left, which means the little block pushes on the big block to the right. And that's a Newton's third law pair. So we need to be careful with those and understand that they will always, 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 and I'll say it again, always be equal and opposite. So free body diagram for 2m. There's 2mg going down. We have the normal force, we'll call it N2 going up. And this contact force over here that's pushing to the right on block M is pushing to, sorry, pushing to the left on block M is pushing to the right, equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. That is the only horizontal force acting on block 2M. And we need to be careful, and if we're doing free body diagrams for points on exams and things like that, make sure that those two contact forces are equal in length and opposite. My right hand one might be a tad longer. Okay, but again, the reason the 2m block accelerates to the right is because of that contact force between the blocks. The reason m accelerates to the right is because f is bigger than f sub c. Okay, so now, like we did with Atwood machines, to find the acceleration of the system, we're going to consider Newton's second law for the entire system. And again, it's important to recognize that the mass would be the mass of the entire system. And the acceleration is the same for both blocks. So the force is acting. Let's go from left to right here. First, the contact force acting on M, that's in the negative direction. So negative F sub C. Then we have this push force acting to the right. That's it for the horizontal forces affecting the motion. Uh, on the smaller block and then on the bigger block, we have a plus F sub C acting to the right. And then this is going to be the mass of the entire system, which in this case is 3m times a. And like we saw with Atwood machines, we noticed that the contact force cancels out, because one's going to the left, one's going to the right. So then the only force affecting the horizontal motion of the system is going to be the push force, F. So we've got F divided by the total mass is equal to our acceleration. So both blocks are accelerating at a third of F over M. Uh, and now to figure out what this contact force is, because part B in this problem might be, hey, what's the contact force between the blocks? We look at Newton's second law for one block or the other. Since the 2M block only has one horizontal force acting, it's easiest to solve for the contact force using Newton's second law for 2M. So the net force acting on 2M is equal to its mass times its acceleration. The only force acting horizontally is the contact force. And the acceleration we found previously, uh, which was F over 3M. So in terms of given quantities here, we've got our contact force. Masses cancel out. And it is simply equal to 2 thirds F. So that's going to be the contact force acting on the block on the right, 2 thirds F pushing that block to the right. And then just a quick check, it totally makes sense here because remember that block M accelerates to the right because F is bigger than F sub C. If F sub C is 2 thirds F, then it's obviously smaller than F. And hey, yep, that block accelerates to the right. So if you ever need to check your work, you can always 
double check Newton's second law for block M here, see if it gives you the same contact force, because again, they need to be equal and opposite. And once again, I'll emphasize, I don't care how this system is moving, accelerating, moving to constant velocity, if we push with F the other way, the contact force between the blocks will always be equal and opposite, okay? The contact force could grow and shrink depending on the situation, but those contact forces between the two blocks will always, always, always be equal and opposite. Okay, uh, and we could extend this. We could take a look at a system where maybe instead of just two blocks, we have three blocks, one in the middle, and here we have two contact forces to deal with, and the contact force here pushes to the left on the smaller block, pushes to the right on the bigger block. Those two would be equal and opposite. We have a second contact force between these two blocks. It pushes to the right on this block, pushes to the left on that block. Those are going to be equal and opposite. Uh, but again, when we consider the net force acting on the system, if we're going to solve for the acceleration, then those contact forces will cancel out because you've got a positive one and a negative one in both instances, and they're equal. So then whatever force we're applying to this system horizontally, it's just that force that's affecting the motion of the system. The contact forces cancel out. All right, so there you've got it. I'll see you next time.